uh, I think that's probably it, isn't it? So should we crack on with the questions, Peter? Yeah, that's great. Um, thanks, Kaz. Um, so just before we ask the questions, I'd just, um, just like to highlight that um, as we're talking about uh, the scoped project, obviously we may end up talking about specific membership bodies. If any of the panellists are talking about the membership bodies and they're highlighting a reason why they uh, want to talk about something, if you could just say why they specifically highlighted that specific membership, just looking at the whole um, scoped project as a whole. Okay. Um, the first question we thought, which kind of kind of eases into this kind of discussion, really, we thought we'd ask each panel member just what your initial thoughts are and reactions are into reading this second version of the scoped project um, before we kind of get into the detail of it. Okay. Um, so the first person uh, I was going to come to was Andy. Um, if you can maybe just give us a bit of an overview of what your thoughts were in terms of the scoped project. Um, yeah. Well, firstly, it feels really good to be here and. Um... Uh, talking with uh, people who are really just Twitter acquaintances. <laughs> um, but so, but that's really good. But the, well, I suppose when I first saw the new iteration was coming out, I just had this kind of sense of gloom, really. Um, that I'm going to have to sort of muster some kind of energy to engage in what's in the document and the, and the various sort of machinations around it and try and kind of make sense of this thing. And these things take energy. And with everything going on in our world right now, um, it felt like, well, have I got room for this? Have I got room to, you know, read through this kind of densely bureaucratic sort of document and kind of make sense of it and, and of what it means? Um, but I suppose I felt a kind of responsibility uh, having been quite engaged in the critique last year about the first iteration. So, um, yeah, so I just tr tried to sort of dive in, really, and it, and I didn't really feel much about it. It just um, sort of met my expectations, I suppose, which is that there had been some tinkering with language as a way of, um, you know, answering at some level the critiques from from uh, last year. And then there's this sort of manoeuvring around how the paths, which I think we're going to come on to discuss, like how the paths between uh, these columns or titles as they were originally um, um, yeah how, how that operates so th th there's there's been some sort of small changes but it was just kind of depressing to sort of see this thing and, and it not be significantly different um, but I suppose I also feel kind of heartened and um, that you know that there's people who are willing to stand up and discuss this critically you know and to to evaluate it and, um, and and really examine it in depth, kind of interrogate it a bit, and to uh, put their heads above the parapet and kind of uh, talk about it openly and talk about their concerns, and that we've got a forum to do that, whether that's here right now or, or on social media, and that we don't just have, for example, the letter letters pages of therapy today. Um, so, and having been around for like twenty years in the profession, it's yeah, it's really heartening for me to see that. There's a sort of a generation of therapists coming through who are really active and want to take on the big kind of political issues uh, in our profession. So, yeah, I mean, all that was going on for me while I was trying to digest this thing. Thank you. Yeah. And I think uh, I agree completely with what you're saying there in terms of at least giving the, uh, an opportunity to kind of talk and discuss and, and, and go through this whole um project to kind of really reflect on what it's about and kind of um where it's coming from um erin can i come to you, can i come to you and and just give us your initial thoughts uh yeah i mean i was um unsurprised by it really um it was pretty much like andy says um what i expected as well um some minor kind of superficial changes um making some of the explicit implicit so for example, with um, the training routes, iteration one sort of explicitly said UKCP and BPC training for TSC, whereas um, now that explicit link to those trainings has been removed, but the TSC um, requirements still describe them. So um, I was unsurprised by by the way that it feels kind of um, almost trying to sort of pacify kind of um, changes in language. Um, I was quite surprised, and I think we're going to come on to this later, but I was quite surprised by the idea of um, taking the titles out um, to put them back in later. That surprised me a bit. 
And the other thing that really was a surprise was that um, working therapeutically with ruptures is still a tier three competency, and, and that did surprise me. But other than that, it, it was pretty much what I expected. Okay, thank you. And I think, yeah, we're definitely going to come on to discussing titles um, a little bit later <laughs> on. Um, Jay, if I could come to you for your first initial reactions. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, for me, it's mostly about the BACP, actually. And I'm sorry if I'm not going at, you know, that you said something and I've got lots of interference about men mentioning membership bodies. But for me, it's mostly about the BACP, because in my view, they're meant to represent both counsellors and psychotherapists, which you can't say is the same as the UKCP and the BPPC. Because in some ways, I'm totally fine with the UKCP and BPC trying to, um, trying to um, advantage their own membership, because in a way that's their job. But in my view, BACP should value both um, titles of counsellors and psychotherapists equally. Um, also, um, in my view as well, this goes back to regulation. Um, back in 2009, one of the reasons that, one of the many reasons why uh, statutory regulation, because there's two, you know, there's normal regulation and statutory regulation, um, but one of the reasons it failed back in 2009 is because when they sent, um, you know, experts off to try and work out what the difference between counselling and psychotherapy was, they couldn't do it. Um, so, in a way, this scoped project, in my view, is setting the groundwork for another go at statutory regulation, which I think they say themselves, more or less, or imply it. Um, so I think, you know, uh, in a way, you've got the issue of standards, and then you've got the issue of statutory regulation. And... Um, you know, this worry that they might be slipping this in statutory regulation, which is actually a related but different issue. And for reasons I don't really understand, the uh, PSA compromise, the Professional Standards Association, I think, um, doesn't seem to have been accepted by quite a few people, obviously, including those um, in these three membership bodies. No, that's, that's, that's great. Okay, thank you. Um, mm. Rima, if I can come to you. Hi, everybody. Well, I guess my initial reactions was um, there was such a long build up to the second version. And um, I guess opening this version, I did have a lot of expectations that it would be quite different to version one. Um, my learning style is that I did need to print it off. I couldn't just read it off a computer and I had to sit with it for a while and offer some time to kind of digest it. And um, I would recommend others, others doing the same if, if you're struggling with sort of the level of content that's been thrown at us. Um, that it does take some time to kind of get to grips with what is this about and how does it differ to version one. Um, I guess for me, what stood out was the removal of titles and changing it to a ABC category um, and I think it had a bit of the opposite effect for me in that I put it made me focus in more on the ABC titles rather than kind of move away from them um, so I guess, I guess to summarize it's left me with a lot more questions and answers and I don't know how far we are from version one to be honest. Um, but I think there has been a lot of thought gone into the feedback, I guess, and there has been some change in language um, to to be a bit more inclusive. But I do think there's a still a long, long way to go around the language and terminology used. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that was a really important point you made there in terms of people trying to understand the scope documentation. And actually, there is a lot of it and there's a lot of kind of commentary out there around the scope documentation. And actually, if you go through all that, it's quite a massive task. Um, and so hopefully, maybe we can break down some of that through, through these discussions today. Um, okay, can I come to you, Emma, and just to get your kind of initial thoughts, please? Um, well, my initial thoughts was it's very colourful, so they obviously have a really good comms and marketing budget to, to, to use on mm -hmm. presentation. Um, but essentially, 
to me, what it seems they've done is just basically taken the same principle and polished it up a bit, you know, changed the titles to the A, B and C, but there isn't any real substance to indicate that they looked at it and looked at possible alternative models that they could have gone for. So to me, this displays a lack of flexibility of thought and ability to take feedback and look at something that might work better for the profession. And I concur with all the other comments from the rest of the panel as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just before we move on to our next question, was there anything else that the panel kind of wanted to mention around their initial thoughts or feelings or, or come back on anything that anybody else has said at this point? No. No. I'll, I'll just mention something quickly, just picking up on something Jay said, because I think, Jay, you said that Peter kind of cut up a little bit when he was speaking about yeah. membership bodies. So just to reiterate yeah. um, what he was saying there, um, um, obviously, this does have a different effect, um, or it could potentially have a different effect, depending on which membership body you're in. So what we're asking today is... Um, if you may sometimes be generally speaking about scope policy and sometimes you may be speaking very specifically about a particular membership body which is completely understandable and it's about holding membership bodies to account but if you could just say which membership body you're you're referring oh. to as, as you did jay there and exactly okay. why um then that would be just be really useful for the listeners 